Welcome to the 80th song episode of the Something in the Wilderness podcast. As always, my name's Steve, and if you've tuned in before, you know that I always choose an Andrew McMahon song to discuss. But today, I'm also going to be talking about a different artist. This may sound like an interesting time to do this, considering Something Corporate this past Thursday started on their tour for the summer and the fall in 2024. Huge news, I know. And I am so excited for everybody who gets to go to these shows. I'm looking at pictures and videos and even set lists this time around because I won't see a full headlining something corporate show until September. But I will see them as of this recording and in its release. I will see them today, actually, at Four Chord Music Festival in Pittsburgh. I'm hoping to see some of you there. And I'm very, very excited. So I just wanted to get on here, talk about a song talk about a few of my thoughts about the current and upcoming tour by Something Corporate. And I know it might seem a little odd or off-brand to talk about a cover song at this point when they're currently out touring their own original songs. And of course, the latest news besides the tour is we just had a brand new song drop by Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness featuring members of Something Corporate uh, with a new music video and all of that. So lots of exciting thing in the land of Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness. But I just kind of want to bring it back to talking about a song. Of course, I chose a something corporate track. But again, I chose a cover track by a different artist. The one we're talking about today is, as far as I know, one of the earliest professional studio recorded cover songs that Andrew ever did. So I want to share some info about this other artist and what I know about the recording, but also talk about the legacy of the something corporate version, of course. So let's get started. Somehow I missed this cover for almost the entire time it's been in existence. And actually, to be honest, I didn't even know this song existed by its original artist. I've talked about this before on the show, but there were certain B-sides or rarities by Something Corporate and Andrew's other iterations that I knew about, but plenty that slipped by me, apparently, including this one. So every time I hear the name of this song in the context of talking about Andrew McMahon-related topics, the only thing I can think of is the quote, unraveling with every word from, of course, the song I'm Ready by Jack's Mannequin. But that's not the song we're talking about today, and we're not talking about Jack's Mannequin. Marissa and I already talked about that one a while back, so if you're interested in hearing about that song, uh, look it up. It was about 20 episodes ago or so. Instead, today I'm talking about the song Unravel, originally recorded by Bjork and covered by Something Corporate many, many years ago. So, of course, the band is something corporate. This version of Unravel was included as track 14 on the UK version of North back in 2003. But in fall of 2023, it was also included on the new vinyl re-release of North. And that's the first time I've gotten my hands on a physical copy of this recording. It's on the second vinyl, Side D as they call it, along with the live acoustic version of Space. Bjork's original version of this song was track 3 on Homogenic, released on September 20th, 1997. There were five singles released off of her album, but Unravel wasn't even one of them. So I'm guessing the SoCo guys were pretty big fans of this album to pick even an album track, not even a single. It's always fascinating to me, though, to think about music releases that I missed, when they were released, and what I was doing at the time. I'll be honest, I was never a Bjork fan. I was an MTV junkie at one point, like a lot of us, Uh, around in the early mid-90s, so I know that its Oh So Quiet video was very popular and won awards. That's really what I know her for, her 90s music videos. They were really, really popular because they were weird. But once I stopped watching MTV during high school, I basically didn't hear anything about Bjork anymore, and none of her songs ever caught my ear. There is no official music video for Unravel, but there is a tour visual that's on YouTube, and I'll include that in the show notes. There's not a lot to it, but if you just want to listen to the song on YouTube and have some artistic visuals in the background, there it is. So not surprisingly, I don't have any information on the genesis of this cover or even the recording of the cover by Something Corporate. We could pretty much assume that it was recorded along with the rest of the North Sessions up at Robert Lang Studios outside of Seattle. And it's not shocking that our guys would record an album track from a popular alternative artist from the mid-90s, considering their musical interest during that time. It seems like they were into a lot of mid to late 90s alternative music. They were in high school when Homogenic by Bjork was released, and 1997 was a massive year for alternative rock. 
but I still find this to be an interesting choice. So let's dig in a bit with the Bjork version. Allegedly, Tom York of Radiohead called Unravel by Bjork his favorite song of all time in a 2006 Spin interview. I guess this is another reason that makes sense on why Something Corporate wanted to record their own version of this song. Tom York's arguably one of the most respected musicians in alternative music. He was back then and still is today. This won't surprise you one bit, but most of what I know about Bjork's writing and recording of this song is from Wikipedia. This song includes her use of a half-singing, half-speaking technique, which is comparable to that of old Icelandic choirmen. Her homogenic album is said to be one of her most experimental up to that point, and I have to add my opinion here. Everything I've ever listened to by Bjork sounds pretty experimental to me. She ranges from big band to industrial to techno to pop ballads, all within the same album. In my opinion, her music cannot be categorized at all. Besides Bjork's vocals, Unravel features saxophones, a church organ, and electronic beats. So pretty different from what we're used to hearing from something corporate. There are so many people listed in the liner notes as musicians on this album, so it'd be super difficult to know who we even played on this song. I do know that both Bjork and Guy Sigsworth are credited as the producers. Now we can easily assume, due to the credits on Something Corporate's North album, that the band playing on this track is the same lineup that are touring currently as Something Corporate. Andrew, Josh, William, Clutch, and Brian. And we can assume Jim Wirt produced their cover of Unravel, just like the rest of the album. Again, just a guess. Let's talk live history. So you could probably guess that there's no record of Something Corporate ever performing this song live. I tried to find something, but there's nothing on YouTube, no record of it on Setlist FM, and I really doubt they're going to start playing it this year. They've played a couple of deep cuts, but to avoid spoilers, I'm not going to say what those are right now. Uh, and I expect they'll play more. But I would be shocked if Unravel made a set list. But who knows? I, and to be honest, I'm not wishing for this song or anything to be on a set list. I'd rather hear the Something Corporate Originals. But Bjork, on the other hand, has played this song live. But with 649 records on Setlist FM for her concerts, she's only played this song at 105 of them. In fact, on a list of all of her songs she's ever played live, it's her 20th most performed live song, well after songs like Human Behavior, Army of Me, and a bunch of other songs I've never heard of. Chances are these hits are much more well-known in Europe than here in the States, but if you're a Bjork fan or if you've ever followed Bjork, Songs like Human Behavior and Army of Me are probably the ones that you've heard of and heard. I am going to link a live performance of her performing this song in 2002. There are several videos out there, some really good ones, but I liked this one best of the ones that I found, so I'll link this one for you. And speaking of live videos, and I did mention Tom York of Radiohead earlier, there is a video out there of Radiohead performing the song Unravel live as well. That one's also linked in the show notes if you're curious. I'd say... You know, some of alternative music's royalty, if you will, specifically European, have performed this song. And hey, something corporate, I think, really respects, again, these alternative acts. So it, it's not that surprising that they'd record this song, but I guess I'm just still curious as to how they decided on this one in particular. Uh, I'm assuming someone in the band really likes it. So musically, something corporate's cover sounds unlike anything else they've ever recorded, in my opinion, anyway. From the beginning notes, it doesn't sound like it fits with their catalog, but it definitely catches the ear hearing Andrew sing over something so different from what we're used to. I do like how clear the lyrics come through in the mix, but it's still very much a full band effort. I love the dreamy, dreary guitars in the background, and I also love that drum fill that happens a couple times throughout the song. Their version, Something Corporate's version, has a bit more energy than Bjork's in my opinion, and I'm certainly biased, but I think there's a bit more passion in the way that Andrew sings it over Bjork. I know Bjork fans would come for me if they hear this, so I'm sorry if I catch any of your ears. So I'll just go ahead and say it now. I obviously prefer Something Corporate's version, but that's nothing against Bjork or her version. I'm just very biased. Uh, Something Corporate's the artist that I enjoy. Bjork, not so much for me. So at some point, if you're wondering why a band covers a specific song, especially a song outside of their own genre, you might ask yourself, well, is there something in the lyrics that inspired them to record their own version of this song? And I guess that could be it. I started reading through the lyrics, and I don't mind reading through them all because there's actually not very many lyrics. I do want to point out that the very first lines in the song are also the last. 
and these may be the lyrics that sound like Andrew could be relating to them. Andrew's discussed this period of his life, the North era, and leading into the transit era that we all know so well, where he was away from Kelly for a long period of time. Actually, all the guys in the band were away from family, friends, and if they had significant others as well for a long time. They toured for about a year and a half on Leaving Through the Window, then went almost right into recording on North. So being young and in a new relationship, that has to take a toll. And in Andrew's case, we all know that it did. Bjork's lyrics on Unravel begin like this. While you are away, my heart comes undone. Slowly unravels in a ball of yarn. The devil collects it with a grin. Our love in a ball of yarn. He'll never return it. So when you come back, we'll have to make new love. He'll never return it. So when you come back, we'll have to make new love. While you are away, my heart comes undone, slowly unravels in a fall of yarn. So I think actually that's every lyric to the song that I just read. If I was reading this as Andrew's own written lyrics, I'd say he could be referring to the pain of being far away from Kelly for so long and the strain that distance and time puts on a relationship that's already fragile to begin with. There are distractions, possibly temptations out on the road, just in general, things that can step in the way of a long-term, long-distance, committed relationship. So when he eventually returns, it's going to be like starting all over again. They'll need to figure out how to create this thing that they had all over again. My favorite part of the Something Corporate version is when Andrew's singing, he'll never return it, and his backing vocals are singing, when you come back, we'll have to make new love. I really like how they produce that, that piece. Again, nothing else by Something Corporate sounds like this, in my opinion, but I think the sound of this is really interesting. I'm also not unhappy or bored with the long outro to this song. Bjork had a long outro in her version as well, but with the piano and the unique instrumentation backing it up in Something Corporate, it made me think that this could have worked well as an instrumental outro or a musical interlude track between tracks on their album. But on North... Uh, You've heard me say this before. I wouldn't want to add nor take anything away from that album. Uh, I think North is a perfect album, but I guess this could have worked, like I said, as a musical interlude. I don't know. So as I, I hope you've gained from this, I don't dislike this cover song, but admittedly it's not one of my favorite studio cover songs that I've heard of by one of Andrew's bands. Uh, I've mentioned that it felt like an odd choice, but also an interesting one. But the original song, the original source material, it doesn't really do anything for me. If I hadn't known this song by Something Corporate was a cover, I would have been really confused. It doesn't sound like anything else they've ever recorded as a band, but it definitely fits as a B-side, or in the case of the new vinyl release of North, even a D-side. Just something different they did in the studio. Maybe they were just kind of playing around and someone was like, hey, we have a recording of it, maybe we'll use it someday. And then eventually they did. But I understand why it was left off the album, but also why someone would want it out there for people to hear. Heck, if there's any other Something Corporate recorded tracks in the studio that haven't been released yet, please send them our way. I don't care what it is. But this song does show, or this version of the song shows, that they could do something different. But also that even though they were known as a pop punk band, they had a variety of tastes. I mean, if if you hear the guys talk about the kind of music they were into back then and are into today... And even during the whole Something Corporate run, it's quite a variety among those guys. So, again, not that shocking. Bjork's a very unique artist covering a variety of genres. And although her music isn't for me, I know that there's a lot of passionate fans of this artist. I'd be curious to know if you're a Bjork fan. Is this a song you'd reference from her catalog if you were introducing someone to her as an artist? Is it a deep cut? Is is it a fan favorite? Is this a good choice for a band like Something Corporate to cover? Was there a better choice? Is there something you would have rather Something Corporate covered? Again, if you're a Bjork fan. If you're looking for other covers of Bjork songs by pop punk bands, I'd also refer you to the Starting Lines take on Big Time Sensuality from the Punk Goes 90s comp. Another song that I only know from the cover rather than from her original version. Well, it's been a pretty cool month this past month. We got a new Something Corporate song, We got the start of the tour. We've started to see things on social media we can keep up with. There's more to come. Very exciting. And as a side note, kind of separate from the whole Something Corporate thing, I did make a trip up to Milwaukee recently, hung out with Andrew McMahon friends, and we went to the Holiday From Real 
beer release party at Mobcraft Brewing. If you didn't know, Lisa and Celeste from Llama Lifters, which is a Deer Jack fundraising team, were able to submit the Holiday from Real beer idea to Mobcraft back in the fall, had it approved, so a portion of the proceeds for every beer sold goes to the Deer Jack Foundation. That is so cool. So, of course, I had to order four four-packs and drive up to Milwaukee and get them, but I wouldn't have done it if I couldn't go hang out with some other cool Andrew McMahon fans. So I thank them for that. It was really a really cool little trip, cool experience, and I was so glad that I was able to be there for it. So shout out to Lisa and Celeste from the Llama Lifters Deer Jack Foundation fundraising team. And shout out to all the fun people I was able to hang out with that weekend as well. It was a lot of fun. So in closing, thanks always for listening. I hope that you yourself get to go to a Something Corporate show this year. I will see some of you out at the shows, maybe even at Four Chord today if you're listening on Sunday, maybe in Cleveland in September, maybe in Detroit in September. Maybe I will see you on the Holiday from Real cruise in November. Either way, I'm so glad for you if you get to go see one of these shows. They look amazing, and it's so important to see a band having a good time together on stage. That is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, qualities of a good concert. So keep on rocking something corporate. Love all of you guys, and I'm so glad you're back together doing what you love, doing what you enjoy, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the shows. Have a great one. Uh, We'll get back soon to talking about original Andrew McMahon songs, but I thought it was a good time for something different. I hope you enjoyed it. Good night. Good night.